So if we fast forward in a couple of years, you, you, you've, you've highlighted out the K2 West Ridge expedition in 78 as one that for you provided sort of quite a bit of um, sort of difficulty or a bit of conflict or that yeah, you well, had to kind of deal with them. Yeah, so in 1978 it was the West Ridge of K2, again, you know, technically it was unclimbed. And um, there was a small team of British mountaineers, you know, the top, the creme de la creme, Bonington and uh, Scott, uh, Braithwaite, Pete Boardman and Joe Tasker. And they were probably as good a mountaineers as you're going to get anywhere. And Nick Escott. And um, Nick died on the expedition. He was swept away in an avalanche. Um, very early on, we are only up at about 7,000 metres and um, that was basically the end of the expedition which was a bit of a shock to me because you know we had people, seen people dying on expeditions before and these were you know guys who'd been climbing and whose mates had been killed or gone missing or got frostbitten over the last 20 years and um, they just made the decision that that was it and uh, walked off the mountain and um, it took me a long time but it took me a while to realize that they probably reached the they've got battle fatigue they've been doing not been going on um, maybe one or two expeditions a year for 20 years and um, they'd had a lot of near scrapes, some injuries, they'd seen a lot of friends injured or die and I think Nick Escott's death was actually um, like one death too many and um, it was a um, almost like a combination of a long history of post-traumatic stress disorder it was um, very interesting from that point of view. So in the ensuing years, did, did you see things play out with these, these men in the same way that you might with a, a patient with post-traumatic stress disorder, or how did they cope with it? Well, they, I mean, they didn't, they, there were no actual reports or, you know, or evidence or history of of any such, you know, that you'd get with a, a normal patient reporting on, you know, um, startled responses or anxiety or insomnia, etc, etc. But um, mountaineers have proven to be extremely um, robust and, um, um, you know, able to cope with those kind of stresses. I mean, like there was, so I don't, you know, and I don't think um, they may have suffered from those um, kind of problems, but just dealt with them themselves. Just refer to something, um, there was a plane crash on Mount Elbrus, a tourist plane, a big jet hit the mountain in the, in the clouds, and um, <clears throat> there was a whole team of police, ambulance men, paramedics, Mountain rescue and a lot of mountaineers went down to gather up all the bodies which were smeared over the mountainside. And some of the psychologists later did follow up on, on the trauma of that with those various groups of people. And um, there was high levels of PTSD amongst all those groups, apart from the mountaineers who virtually had none. And um, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's, um, you know, somehow you just get used to being shot at or getting used to living on the edge and ex you start to accept that this is a possibility. I don't know. Is that something that you, th I mean, I think if we look at this, the, you know, these men that you're climbing Everest and K2 with sort of very elite, dedicated climbers, it was also some years ago, we're seeing an increase, quite a large increase in, in expeditions and as you've mentioned, the sort of Everest by the tourist route. 
Do you think that's something that's changed as the, the demographic of people visiting remote places has changed? Is it more of an issue for us now than it was then? In what? In terms of PTSD or...? Or psychological problems generally, perhaps. Yeah, I think um, if you're a doctor taking um, groups into the mountains, especially if they're what I call tourist groups, you know, this guiding, then you, you, you really don't know who you're taking. And, um, you know, my experience has been um, taking trekking groups into the mountains, both um, ordinary people and, and doctors, which is interesting, taking doctors trekking. And um, they're always, uh, doctors actually stand out as being, um, they get on well together and knuckle down you get the few eccentrics who are quite bizarre, um, especially remote and rural doctors, but not only. Um, and they're much easier. They form a career and group much quicker than um, average um, tour group that you put together.